Welcome. Previously, we saw the Battle of Uman, where 200,000 Soviet troops were killed or captured in a sizable pocket near the city of Uman. Immediately after this battle, Army Group South turned their attention northeast and began the march onto the city of Kiev. If you have watched my video on the Battle of Smolensk, you will know that Hitler decided to stop the advance onto Moscow and send Heinz Guderian and his 2nd Panzer Army to the south towards Kiev. This collaborative strike from Army Group Center and Army Group South would give the Germans an opportunity to attack Kiev with a huge pincer movement. Let's take a look at the numbers. On the German side, we have the 2nd Panzer Army and 2nd Infantry Army from Army Group Center, along with the 1st Panzer Army, 6th and 17th Infantry Armies from Army Group South. On the Soviet side, we have the 5th, 6th, 13th, 21st, 26th, 37th, 38th, and 40th armies. The Soviet force is made up of remnants from previous battles and also fresh recruits who are poorly equipped and poorly trained. In comparison, the German units totaled up to about 500,000 men with about 1,000 to 1,500 tanks. They had complete air superiority. The Soviets had about 627,000 men at the onset of the battle, but later reinforcements would bring the total number to upwards of 1 million soldiers. Soviet tank units were severely depleted and they fielded no more than 1,000 tanks in this battle. This is what the front lines looked like on September 1st, 1941. Stalin still did not learn from his mistakes and issued orders to not retreat under any circumstances. As a result, Soviet forces were forced to hold the line even though German units have already carved a circular shape east of Kiev. German units from Army Group Center launched their attack and pushes back the Soviet 5th, 21st, and 40th armies. The 3rd Panzer Division manages to effect a deep penetration in a gap between the 21st and 40th armies. The German 1st Panzer Army was waiting for reinforcements to catch up and did not make any attack in this period of time. German and Soviet infantry in the south engaged each other all across the line and neither side gained any ground. Bloody street fighting is raging inside Kiev between the German 6th Army and the Soviet 37th Army. The day is now September 10th. German units in the south launched their thrust with the 9th Panzer Division racing ahead. Other Panzer Divisions and two infantry corps follow behind and hold open the gap. Up north, German units continued their attack and easily pushed back the disorganized Soviet defenders. On September 13th, the 3rd Panzer Division makes contact with the 9th Panzer Division, signaling a successful pincer movement. The fighting raged on inside Kiev as the 37th Army holds its ground against repeated German attacks. The day is now September 15th. During this time, the commander-in-chief of the Soviet Southwestern Front, Semyon Budioni, was relieved of duty by Stalin. The Soviet armies cut off inside the cauldron are now experiencing total communication breakdown and mass confusion. German Panzer spearheads have stabilized the line against Soviet armies to the east. German units began to divide and conquer, separating the trapped Soviet armies into their own pockets and squeezing each one. The Soviet armies began a general retreat to the east and handfuls of soldiers managed to slip through the extended German lines back to Mother Russia. However, the bulk of them are still trapped. On September 19th, the city of Kiev fell to the Germans, and by September 26th, Soviet resistance have generally ceased. The bulk of four and a half Soviet armies were destroyed. The Soviets took massive casualties. They started out the battle with eight armies and ended up with just three and a half. Soviet irrecoverable losses were 616,000 with another 84,000 wounded for a total of around 700,000 casualties. The Germans also took hefty casualties with 27,000 killed, 97,000 wounded, and 5,000 missing or captured. This adds up to a total of 129,000 casualties, which is actually a significant amount for the numerically inferior German army. The Battle of Kiev, again, demonstrated German operational supremacy in the early parts of World War II. The swift movement of German panzers coupled with Stalin's repeated stubbornness resulted in the largest military encirclement in human history. That's right, the largest human encirclement in military history. 
Hitler declared the Battle of Kiev to be the greatest battle fought in human history, but this battle was not the strategic victory that Germany needed to win the war. Despite liquidating another huge chunk of their Soviet army, the Germans would soon realize the Russians aren't running out of men or material anytime soon. In fact, as the German war machine drove on to Moscow, they will realize the ones running out of men and tanks and airplanes are themselves and not the Russians.